Hi, and welcome to this video on the barriers to participation in sport and their possible solutions. Uh, this is an A-level sport and society video, particularly for AQA. Now, I've got three people here who have been huge in their sport. If you know these people, well done. So the tennis player on the left is called Billie Jean King. She was an American tennis player and fought for equality in women's sport. She was even challenged by a male tennis player who she beat, and he was trying to ridicule female tennis, so she stood up for that. The middle, you've got Tanny Gray Thompson, who was a multiple winner of medals at multiple uh, Paralympics. She's now Baroness Tammy Thompson, and she is part of essentially the decision-making at government level. And she's part of the House of Lords, so she has that influence, and she's a huge voice for disabilities and disability sport. And the guy on the right, that is uh, one of the Roonies, who are one of the Pittsburgh steel owners, and he fought for equality in NFL, so American football, and he wanted coaches from ethnic minorities to be given a chance so in pro sport in america they have to follow the rooney rule which means they must interview a candidate for a senior role at a, at a club from an ethnic minority as well so let's look at disability here so one of the barriers is that they often have a negative self-image um, worry that they can achieve and lack maybe that self-confidence to go and start a new sport. Often disability uh, participants have lower income, maybe don't work as much because of their disability and therefore can't afford the equipment and transport and often those costs are higher because specialist uh, equipment for disabled sport is normally more expensive such as sport wheelchairs or carbon fiber prosthetics and it often costs more to travel to train or compete because local clubs are not as close as they are for able-bodied and also local matches are further afield so they're, they're even their closest matches may well be in the next county also in older sports facilities, lack of access for wheelchair and other disabilities to enter the building or use the building or use the changing facilities can be a problem for clubs to form there or for people to actually access to go and train. Lack of organised programmes. So there aren't enough programmes now to encourage disability sport or increase it at grassroots levels. Lack of specialist coaches, equipment and competitions are a problem because a lot of sports teams for disability haven't got the correct coaches or trained coaches to really help people progress. And also the equipment, as I mentioned, is more expensive for those clubs to have. And there is a lack of competition because there are so few clubs. There is also myths and stereotypes to break down about what disability uh, performers can and can't do and that can lead to like self-doubt and also coaches not going into disability sport for maybe a able-bodied sport some of the solutions so providing more opportunities to help talented athletes succeed increased investment and that is happening all the time at the moment Improved transport access to and around facilities. Improved equipment and technology. Increased media coverage, because the media coverage brings about more role models. Now we're seeing that more. Uh, the BBC and Channel 4 both put more disability sports on, not just the Paralympics. Training of specialist coaches. is going to have a massive impact because it's going to improve the talent pool and it's going to encourage people to stay in the sport. Education, not just of people with disabilities, but also others to break down these barriers and myths 
about disability and what they can do. Development of accessible activity. So bringing about more sports or introducing current sports such as goalball and boccia, which are designed for people with specific disabilities. Being able to have access to those would be key. And organisations to help promote that and to bring, have an organised kind of structure to bring that, to make sure everybody around the country has fair access to that, such as Sports England. Ethnicity and barriers. Okay, so ethnicity is another minority group. Now, often they don't take part from minorities if they fear racism. Particularly at a young age, their parents might not send them to certain sport clubs because they fear they might face racism from other children or maybe from the other people in the establishment, coaches, etc. Maybe they've had a bad experience in sport and so they, they don't want their children to have the same experience. Now, channeling is another barrier and it means that often people from ethnic minorities are channeled into certain sports, often maybe based on uh, cultural beliefs, such as uh, South Asians, Pakistani and, and Indians play cricket. And that can lead to almost a stereotyping within sport they, that, that Indians can play cricket, but not football. And so you get less uh, Indians in Britain going in and taking up football. Okay. So that's a barrier that needs to be broken down. You've also got it more specific. So within a sport, you might get more black players playing on the wing. So the coaches and teachers end up channeling black players onto the wing for their physicality and speed instead of into decision-making uh, positions such as scrum half and fly half. So the definition, being pushed into a certain sport or position based on an assumption about them. Stacking. Those from minorities struggle to have positions of leadership or decision making. OK, that's primarily within a team. So it's very rare uh, that we have people from ethnic minorities becoming leaders or decision makers such as captains, fly halves in rugby. The key roles often go to, to the white players. And you can see that even through coaching and managing and NGB structures as well. So definition, disproportionate concentration of ethnic minorities in certain positions in a team based on their stereotype of their physicality rather than their decision making. OK, that's continued. So conflict with religious observance. So, for example, during Ramadan, um, Muslims uh, fasting and often they'll take time off uh, doing physical activity because it's draining not to play. Some cultures have a higher value on education and therefore push individuals or their children into education and away from sport. So there's always a push and pull situation often with these barriers. There are fewer role models in certain sports. Cricket's got a huge problem. It used to be excellent at promoting uh, black and Afro-Caribbean uh, cricketers into the England setup, but there are very few of them now. And so current children coming through haven't got role models in the England team that they maybe could aspire to. A fear of rejection and low levels of self-esteem can affect whether... Um, Ethnic minority children in particular take up a certain sport, a belief of whether they can. Or, and that often comes back down to role models. Stereotyping in the role of kind of stacking maybe reduces their chance of progressing. And language barriers between coaches and individuals and parents to help that we've got to kind of break down those barriers and be more understanding or have coaches who represent them and their culture and maybe can speak and understand them better with their language. Some solutions. So training more coaches from those minorities, as I said, that's going to help uh, 
bring what we call um, someone who they can look up to as a role model who represents them, who they can see themselves progressing towards. Single sex provision for Muslim women. So that's a big thing at some leisure centres now is to have Muslim women swimming sessions so they feel safe They because they have to wear more clothing when they're swimming. They're less self-conscious because they're not to show uh, parts of their body and their skin because that's a religious observation they have. Media coverage condemning racism and highlighting punishments. So it's becoming more popular to for the media now to condemn racism. We're seeing it more on TV. It's highlighted more. Players are coming out. I think recently we had a football match in a European game where Paris Saint-Germain, I think, walked off the field because racism was being thrown at them uh, by the other team. They left and the game had to be rearranged. So that's becoming more uh, prevalent in the media and that's highlighting how we're trying to stamp it out and that it's unacceptable. Campaigns such as Kick It Out in this country in football are to try and educate people and try to stamp out racism and highlight that it is a problem, but how we're going to go about solving it, bring it, educating people that this is the wrong thing to do. And in the USA, the Rooney Rule, now that start of kind of creeping into this country. They're thinking of adopting a similar kind of thing where people from ethnic minorities have to be interviewed for leadership roles and be given a chance to have at least have an interview. Okay, gender. So we're primarily looking at uh, females here. So they often have a lack of time due to childcare and home duties, even still going back to the traditional view of females being at home and looking after children more. That still does happen more in this country than males in those roles. Less media coverage of female sport and role models, although that is changing. We're having more women's football, more women's cricket and rugby being shown on TV. So hopefully that will change quickly. Less variety in school, in school for girls. So often in schools, boys take part in a wider range of activities than girls do. Only recently have more schools opened football and rugby to girls. Breaking down stereotypes and myths over certain sports being female or male and again at what girls can and can't do. There's less money in sponsorship in female sport and that's also there's less money filtering down to grassroots level. Females have more body image and self-esteem issues and that can translate into sport and reduce confidence in taking part in sport. And they often have less disposable income, often because of childcare, they may be working less and therefore have less money and therefore maybe don't spend that to join sports clubs. And there are less female competitions, a bit like disability, female sport have to travel further to play their local teams than boys teams and men's teams. They're, they have to physically travel maybe around the whole county for female football just to play their games. Solutions to this. So laws on equality now exist to make sure we promote uh, male and female sport. Increase acceptance on women having jobs and careers as well as playing sport. Okay. So society is becoming more educated in that and more accepting. Encourage shared domestic roles. So in families, males taking more childcare and house duties. That's going to give females more time. Education society to break down these myths and stereotypes. Changing the game. And a this girl can schemes are kind of out there at the moment to kind of break down uh, myths and stereotypes, not just for females, but for males as well, to kind of help females feel confidence going to sport. Increased media coverage and role models. And more sponsorships needed to help women's sport progress and help it be covered on TV. Providing more opportunities for girls and uh, women, so having more teams set up in clubs. 
improving the change in school. Now, in surveys, one of the biggest things that put girls off doing sport, whether that's in school or at leisure centres, was the quality of the changing facilities. It was a high priority that they were clean, bright, new, with uh, cubicles and hair dryers. So they felt more comfortable in those areas. Social networking and media to encourage women back into sport has been a, a, a real driving force and that's going to help maybe advertise different sports and clubs where females can come back into. Netball's had a big drive about bringing people back into sport. Having stopped playing at school, they're trying to get those females to come back later in life and play netball. Sport England has a lot of these schemes coming on board now. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I've got more A-level videos and I've got some on analysis and evaluation. Check them out and good luck.